Hi, I'm Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek. Is Benny Hinn Word of Faith? You hear this all the time from critics of Benny Hinn and Word of Faith teaching, but if you've watched this channel for a while, you've probably heard me say that Benny Hinn is not Word of Faith, that he tried to teach it back in the 80s and made a mess of it, and then renounced it in 1993 in an interview published in Charisma magazine. I got a copy of it right here. Now, I'm going to play a couple of clips for you here, but I want you to stay tuned because I'm going to point out some things later in the video to put all of this into perspective. Now let me play you an excerpt of that interview that I included in the second video I ever did on this channel back in 2015. In an August 1993 interview with Charisma magazine, Hinn said the following, The Lord is showing me some things I've been wrong about. At one point, I taught certain things such as the little God's teaching and Jesus dying spiritually. Now I've quit teaching such things, and I have made it clear that I no longer believe them. In the past, I also taught some things about faith, confession, and prosperity that were out of balance. Now I want to come back to the center. I was educated and influenced by Catholics when I was growing up. Then shortly after I was born again, I was influenced by Catherine Kuhlman. Both the Catholics and Catherine emphasized reverence for God. When I moved to Orlando in 1980, things changed. I got to know some of the faith teachers and began to read a lot of their books. So my teachings began to change. But I'll tell you what has happened recently. I am coming back to the way I was before 1980. After 10 years of filling my life with faith books, I got to the place where I found some extremes in this teaching. I respect these teachers as men of God, but frankly, they are teaching some things that I don't believe. For example, I used to teach that Jesus died spiritually and suffered in hell. Through my own study, I discovered that this didn't line up with the Word. When the Lord said, It is finished on the cross, He didn't add, To be continued. Things began changing in me two years ago when I told Christianity Today that the faith message doesn't add up. But I went on teaching some things because I didn't have the whole picture yet. When you're into something for ten years, you don't change quickly. I don't believe that confessing the word works the way I taught it in the past. Of course, we should believe and confess God's word, but I don't believe we can just confess any scripture and make it happen. So Benny confirms what I said, that he taught faith back in the 80s and made a mess of it. Now, some of the things that he considered faith teaching were things that Kenneth Copeland taught, that Kenneth Hagin wouldn't have agreed with, like the little God's doctrine and the extremism on prosperity and confession. But he was clearly distancing himself from the Word of Faith movement and moving back toward the Catherine Kuhlman model he built his ministry around. So, the other day, I came across a video clip where he discusses this a bit more. Let me play some of that here. When I became a pastor, I decided to read Kenyon's books. You know who Kenyon is? Kenyon is the father of the faith movement. So, I read Kenyon. It almost destroyed my ministry. Don't look at me like this. Just keep listening. It wasn't my stream. It was not my stream. In the ministry, there are different streams. The river of God has different streams. There's the faith stream. There's the teaching stream. There's the healing stream. Huh? Different streams. My stream is the healing ministry. It's not the faith movement. I am not to teach what Copeland teaches. Copeland and Hagen are in a different stream. Watch what stream you swim in. Don't change streams. If you change, you die. Anybody getting what I'm talking about here? As a pastor... I felt I needed to teach faith. So I began to read Kenyon's books. Great teacher, but not my stream. 
And the Lord spoke to me, and you remember that. God said, go back to your calling or you will lose your ministry. Because when I began teaching faith, I made a big mess. Because it's not my world. To this day, people accuse me of saying things that were wrong. I admit they were. Because my mistake was, I went into the wrong stream. When I came back into the healing stream, everything became normal. My anointing came alive. Brother, if someone today gave me a book by Kenyon, I would not read it for a million dollars. You say, why? It's a great book. Great teaching. Wrong stream. I don't want to fill my mind with that stuff. I want to fill my mind with people of like stream. How many understand? Put your hands up high. Ora Roberts is in my stream. Catherine is in my stream. Amy Semple McPherson is in my stream. Maria Woodworth Etter is in my stream. How many understand? Put your hands up high. The healing ministry is my stream. If I get away from it, I mess it all up. People that have gone to another stream have moved into heresy. Because they start teaching what God never told them to teach. They try to teach somebody else's revelation. It doesn't work. Never teach another man's revelation. Teach your own. As long as you stick with what God gave you, you're safe. But if you teach somebody else's truth, you've gone. So this is further evidence that he doesn't consider himself part of the Word of Faith stream. His stream, as he said, is that of Oral Roberts and Catherine Kuhlman. Remember that the next time somebody tries to lump Benny Hinn in with Word of Faith teachers. Now let me make some observations. Benny is saying that he messed up by moving into the wrong stream and teaching another man's truth. Well, if you believe that each of us has our own truth, that's relativism. That's progressive philosophy that we each have our own subjective truth rather than there being only objective eternal truth. I don't think Benny believes that, so it's confusing why he would refer to another man's truth. Maybe he just meant another man's revelation. If that's the case, then that's okay. It's fine to stick with the understanding of the Bible that you have until your understanding evolves or changes. We all experience that. But to suggest that Word of Faith teaching is Kenyon's truth or Kenneth Hagin's truth or Kenneth Copeland's truth is wrong. It's either truth for everybody or it's not truth at all. If you don't agree with it, then say so. But don't characterize it as somebody else's truth. That's just confusing. Also, Benny Hinn's problem isn't that he was in the wrong stream. His problem is that he's not a teacher. God told him, go back to your calling or you will lose your ministry. I believe that, but I think Benny may have misinterpreted that. Benny's calling is to minister as a healing evangelist. He shouldn't teach because that's not his calling. He's prone to going off on tangents and saying ridiculous things like Adam could fly to the moon and Eve gave birth out of her side and there are nine members of the Godhead. None of that came from Kenyon or Hagen or Copeland. That's just Benny being a theological loose cannon. William Branham made the same mistake. He was called to preach the gospel and minister to the sick. But when he started teaching, he went totally off the rails. To this day, there are still hundreds of thousands, if not millions, who follow William Branham's nonsense about legalism, Unitarianism, and the serpent seed doctrine. His problem wasn't so much that he was in the wrong stream as it was that he wasn't called to teach. The same is obviously true for Benny Hinn. He doesn't know how to properly exegete and exposit scripture. He hasn't gone off the rails like Branham did, but he has caused a lot of confusion. Benny Hinn is gifted as a healing evangelist. I'm not. I couldn't do what he does. 
Can you imagine me as a healing evangelist? No, I'm too boring. But Benny has a dynamic style and bold personality that is better suited for preaching the gospel and praying for the sick. And he's not a prophet either. Let's look at a few of his ventures into the prophetic. He said that Fidel Castro would die in the 90s. He died in 2016. He said that there would be devastating earthquakes on the east coast of the United States. There weren't. He said that in the mid-90s, God would destroy the homosexual community in America. Didn't happen. Now, this is where his critics will call him a false prophet. But I just think that he tried to step into a prophetic ministry that God hasn't called him to. He's called to preach the gospel and minister to the sick. Even Justin Peters has said that he has heard Benny Hinn give a good presentation of the gospel. So he's gifted in that area. And people do get healed in his meetings. I know his critics will question that, but I've been around a long time and I've met too many people who testify of genuine healings that resulted from Benny's ministry. So when God told Benny to get back to his calling, I don't think that was about what books he was reading. I think it was about what office he functions in. He isn't a teacher or a prophet. He's a healing evangelist. And I believe that if he stays within that role, his ministry will flourish. Thanks for watching and be blessed.